Hi, I'm Doug Wallman. Today I'm going to unbox the Primo EM272 from Mike Boosters, MikeBooster.com, excuse me, and also the Primo EM264. That one is cardioid or unidirectional, but the main one really that I'll probably use the most, but I could be wrong, is the Primo EM272. I uh, already have a mic right now that I'm using that's fairly similar in the specs. Um, that one is from DigiKey uh, AOM5024L-HD-R. So the mic I'm using right now is the AOM5024L-HD-R. Now I don't know they may not even sound that different since the specs are so similar on those. But uh, I noticed there's so much notoriety on the Primo EM272 that I wanted to give it a try. So with no further ado, let me get to unboxing this. Um, unpacking it, because it's not really in a box. I got a few other things along with that. Some heat shrink and stuff that helped me make it. Where am I at here? Anyway, I have all my stuff here, my foamy thing, nope. but let's uh, see how it works anyway. And wow, apparently it's possible. Yep. I made it through, but it's not too happy with me. Oh man, hopefully I'm not stressing this wire out even more by pulling the way I am. Wow. It's gonna better not pull any more on that. Oh, at least now I know what's what. This is gonna be the ground or the negative ground, really. I pulled on that so bad. <laughs> All right, well. Okay, so let's take another look here. I'm gonna have to take a pretty good look. So I don't have. I don't want to do this over. And I think there's a little indication as to which one. Okay, this is going to be the ground. I'm taking that to be true because it's the copper one. They're both going to be copper in the final analysis, but I mean, it's showing copper. Okay. Now, I may put a little bit of dab on there too to begin with. I don't like how that it's like that. Why did I have to do that? Okay.
Might as well quit do one on this too. Okay. Once again, let's make sure we got this right. Yep. That's not good. That's really not. So it's in there. Soldered on there pretty good. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get some white paper or something to help this focus in. Yeah, like that. So well, there's my solder job, as far as that goes. I admit the capsule got just a little bit hot, but not, hopefully not too bad. That's, you know, ideally not really a good thing to have happen. No. Ideally, also, this isn't good because it's, it's not going to fit in there like that, is it? If we bend these wires, what are we at here? going to have to bend them. Let's get the autofocus back on. I'm going to have to bend these, which looks like it actually will be okay. I maybe should have considered that a little bit. And then here's this piece right here. That's just going to go over the top. So that part's done. Probably put on a One of these guys. And there we have it. Now I want to distinguish this because this one here is the uh, omnidirectional. What's it called again? This is the uh, Primo EM272. Of course, right now I'm recording with something that very well could be very similar in specs. I was told it was AOM 5024L HDR. That's what I'm literally recording with right now. But let me see if I switch these out. We'll know right away how similar they are. I can just do that. Hot swap them. I hope when I did this right. Moment of truth. Let's see if I'm still recording. I am still recording. Oh my goodness. That is so cool. So I might as well unravel this thing. Oh, I never did do the heat shrink. Well, let's just see if it works. The heat shrink's right here. I don't even know if I want that now because it looks like it's got plenty. It's always there if available to me if I want to use it. I may not actually even bother with that because that was pretty snug getting that through there. I was worried I was damaging the wire. 
and it's going to look a lot better without it. So let me do a hot swap. Make sure, make sure I'm still recording. I know that's got to be coming near the end of that recording cycle. So here we go. I'm going to get in the frame here. Okay. So we are going to... Uh, Okay, looks like it does actually work. Okay. I was confusing, um, I was kind of surprised it didn't work because uh, it can't be that much different. That's so embarrassing though that, in fact, let's just move this one out of the way now. My, ugh. I guess I'm just in that frame of mind where well, let's do an A-B on this again. So this is the one that's this one I'm holding in my hand. This is the AOM-5024L-HD-R. This is the first lavalier I made. So, uh, test. I do hear a little difference on this. Uh, I know I got some noise going on. Let's see if I'm still recording even. If it captured that moment of truth, it, it did. Oh, I wish I would have captured that a little better. Test one, two. Now I may want to have to, I might have to dial in the settings a little better. Turn it up a little bit here. Test one, two, test. I don't want to say that it's quieter or less sensitive. I don't even know the exact specs right now, but I know it's pretty similar to what I already had. I can tell a difference. I'm not sure exactly how you would describe that. Let's go back to the other one real quick. In fact, I'll pre-clamp it to my shirt. This other one, it won't be in exact same position, but... Uh, Okay, let's not be so confused this time. This one, test. No matter if it's the placement. All right, so moment of truth. Well, the moment of truth is right now I, <laughs> I had some difficulty before. So the moment of truth is it, uh, it had worked right away, but I, had, I think I did something weird, like plug it into my headphone jack. It's like, oh, it doesn't work, but I thought, oh, it has to work. So I'm going to figure out it did, but I'm already using it. So let's go back to what I was using. And uh, I had turned up the gain on this. So now this one's going to sound maybe a little bit more noise floor. I know I can get these to be uh, quieter. I'm using a preamp. And I hope it doesn't sound that noisy. It probably will. This, and I got the camera's preamp down quite a bit. Test one, two. Test one, two. So this right here is the OEM 5024L HDR that I got from DigiKey and I'm going to switch out to what I just soldered together in a nice, you know, enclosure. Here we go. Does that sound, maybe sounds a little cleaner in some ways. I'm not really sure. It's not. And let's go back. DigiKey's comparable one, OEM 5024L HDR. And this is from MikeBooster.com, Primo EM272. DigiKey 5024L HDR, testing one, two, three. Little unfair because I did turn down the gain. Sorry, I turned up the gain after inserting this, this uh, Primo EM272. Primo EM272. Primo EM272. 
So yeah, it's a nice mic. Let me uh, do a little close-up of it here. We came back, so one of the things I noticed is actually a lot of that noise. I was looking at what this is. <laughs> How did that get here and what is it? Anyhow, a lot of that noise that I heard, but I thought was noise floor, the preamp, was actually my laptop. So that was kind of an unfair comparison in that regard. And I still have noise going on here. I don't know if this is making noise. Yeah, this is my uh, diff diffuser for essential oils. There. See, that's making a bunch of noise. Can you hear that? I'll turn that down. And even with that off, there's still other things making noise. But it's quieter without the computer on anyway. So this right here is the EM272 right now. So I'm going to swap back to what, you know, I was when I first started the video. This is the one from DigiKey, OEM 5024L HDR. Um, maybe I should just start from here. I don't know. So this is... This is the OEM 5024L HDR. And this is the one from DigiKey. There you go. Hope you can tell the difference. Oh yeah, one more thing. I did get... I wonder if I just want to rip it open this way. Got a a screen for the mic. I don't know if I'm going to have it on all the time. Probably not. It look funny, but one of those fur things, cat killer for my lavalier. Look at that, would you? And that looks like I can't even see the opening of this. Oh, there it is. Wow. Well, I'm not sure if I want to bother trying to put that on right now. That looks like that would be kind of a pain to get on, but I'm probably not going to bother testing it out right now <laughs> just because it looks like it would be Almost like a dedicated thing where if, once you get it on, you just want to leave it on or off. Oh, you'd probably take off. Maybe I'll switch the mics just so you don't have to keep hearing what that sounds like. Where am I at here? So, test. No, now I'm back on the the mic I started off with, the one from DigiKey. But that way I can slip this on here without you having to hear the whole racket. I'd probably take this off. I would assume. Well, that's. Well, it fits on there real nice. I don't know if this is still recording. Yep. Let's 
like it is. Okay. I'm going to clip this on my shirt. And, nope, that's the... Things can get really confusing fast with all my wires. Okay, pretty sure this is the uh, mic. And that's what it sounds like with the protection on there, which maybe I'll just leave it on. I don't know. It's kind of funny though. <laughs> but anywho, that's that. I'd have to really go out in the wind to test it out. There's some wind for you. Just there a few seconds ago. If that didn't register some wind noise, then, then it's really good. It's not a lot, but it's probably the amount you'd want protection from a reasonable, you know, level. There's a little more right there. Of course, I'm. if I wanted to really protect myself, I'd probably wear it under my shirt, maybe, in addition to that. All right, I've taken off the dead cat. Does it sound any different? Testing one, two, three, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. All right, it's kind of a pain to put on, so hope, hope it helps somebody. Hope it helps somebody. As, as long as we're here testing out this mic, quote unquote, I mean, I wouldn't just go anywhere. Yeah, I would. One time I tried to test stuff out in my backyard. That's no fun. That is no fun. Next I'll be testing a gimbal or something, right? Because it's hard to hold this stuff straight as you're walking. I don't have a GoPro or any such thing. Maybe that's the solution. For some of, for some footage, maybe it is. Thanks for subscribing. I know it's been an awful video. Remember to hit the notification icon so you can listen to this again or in a video like this, anyhow. Thanks for watching. Uh, it's just kind of one of those moments where just, it wasn't the right time to do a video, but I pushed through anyway. And I still have this one to solder. This is the uh, unidirectional one, the EM264. So I don't know if I'm going to splice that together into a, this video or just do a separate video of what I want to do. But we'll figure it out. Thanks for watching. I am back um, next day. I decided today I wanted to try to uh, solder the Primo EM264 microphone from MikeBooster.com. That is their cardioid unidirectional version. Probably very similar to the EM272 that I'm wearing right now. Only difference is, or no, I'm not sure if it's the only difference, but I think the main difference is it's a cardioid. Uh, unidirectional. So, just trying to monitor everything, make sure I'm actually recording this time. 
But you mix you missed some good unboxing. It's probably a benefit. First thing I should really do. Is uh, try some of this out here. Tip cleaner for my soldering iron. Um, probably should have had this ready, but I thought maybe I'd show this off. And I I have more clearance now, or more more cord. <laughs> I took care of that situation too. My tip actually isn't as bad as I thought it was, but we're gonna. I've never, whoa, that stinks. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> Should have been prepared for that. All right. So that, that cleaned it up a little bit there. Of course, I know I should tin my tip. And I don't. Actually, we're gonna use this stuff here. Almost kind of crinkled up, which makes it hard to use. I hate that, <laughs> but I do like the fact that it's, um, was it rosin core? Super rosin core. And again, nothing ever wants to focus. What is the deal with that anyhow? Anybody know? I know I can go to the manual setting and take care of it. Well, I'm back and uh, decided that I wanted to uh, solder the other microphone capsule. Already took it out of its bag. It's right here. I'm trying to find where the bag was because I've had kind of a rough go of getting this video started. I already took it out of the bag. And lo and behold, I think it kind of focuses in on that. This is the... Uh, that's my fridge in the background it just started but actually this microphone capsule might be good at eliminating some of that how close can you get to this i'm just curious and this is the microphone capsule i'm not sure if auto could even do that this is manual Oh, there it is. This one has like a black cover. Anywho, and I'll have the same enclosure. Now I do have some noise reduction software if I wanna get rid of that fridge noise in the background, but actually, did I mention already that this microphone capsule may actually prove to be good for limiting some of that unwanted noise. Maybe, we'll see. This time I got some of this to clean my soldering tip and I had just did that. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to include that in the video or not. Cause I did record some of that. But... All right. That fridge is making awful noise. Well, so we want to make sure we are prepared here. I think the first thing we did to grab one of these grommets. I'm gonna have to put this back on autofocus. I think I can't constantly keep switching that. I have a heck of a time with these little bags when I'm on video. I probably should have, well, I wanted the moment to be real, you know. So here we go. the grommet probably can't focus in on that very well can it there it, it kind of did I 
where the brightness would probably impact things a little bit. There. It like slides back down really easy too. Completely annoyed. <laughs> Anyhow, see it just slid right back down on its own. That's the grommet. Anyhow, no, I better be more in the middle here. So we're going to have to slide this in here first, I think. How that works. I think it goes through here first, obviously, but I still had to think about it. <laughs> Again, this is the uh, Primo EM264 from MikeBooster.com. I was a little suspect of this cable because it doesn't have two black rings, but I think it is there. It's just not perhaps marked appropriately. Man, I'm going to have to do uh, manual focus for that too. There we go. All right, now put it back on manual, goes right out. Wants to focus on this green. Maybe it's this contrasty thing down here that's doing that, I don't know. But anyhow, we got this enclosure slid over the wire. We better get moving here. Now we gotta do, make sure that's ready, uh, this grommet thing. So let me think about this for a second here. This is going to have to go in here this way. And it's probably not going to like it. It's not like that one bit. I think I got it though. Yay. Pulling that as much as I can. And this one is the... I pulled too hard, I think I did a bad thing there because now this doesn't have as much wire there. Do you need to have some of it? I don't want it to clip off any lead or that's not good.
See what I mean there? Gonna have to spend some time fixing that. But I need to be able to uh, retract that back. And I pulled so dang hard on that that I don't know if I can. And you could probably get along without it at all. I don't think I want to do that though. If anything, I just keep making things worse. It's basically like some tiny heat shrink. And the more I mess with this, the worse it gets. Try to coax it back the best I can. So I think we do want that on there. I just clipped my nails. Now I do have a Needle nose, let me see if I can go find it. So it's gotta be something. Well, that's even worse. Now I've got my microphone capsule. God knows where. Here it is. I found it. Oh, 
Almost lost my microphone capsule there. Test, are we still recording even? Yep. Wow. probably have to work let's see if I can focus in on that So oh, yeah, we got that. Well, let's try this again. There, that's better. Now if I pull on these, I gotta be careful not to yank off that tiny, tiny heat shrink. I'm hoping that's a good enough. Last time I really yanked, I really pulled on these. That's why I was a little less afraid to pull. You do need to pull to create that tension, I think. All right. Well, these are already tinned. Here's my handy dandy. And here. Let's try to get soldering here. So make sure I have everything I need. I have my enclosure, my grommet. Let's get going. This has been ridiculous. Here's my rosin core solder. All right, moment of truth. You're gonna to wanna to make sure this part's being recorded. <laughs> now this is gonna be a little trickier than the last one I did. So I'm gonna have to be pretty careful. I just tend it a little bit more. Doesn't it feel hot? I know it can get a little bit hot. At least now I know which one the negative is. The problem is can I see that on here now? I did see it, now I don't know if I can. Well, the positive is on, on that side. So the negative is on the left over here, I guess. Look at this again. 
Here I see the positive sign, so we know where the positive is. So actually isn't this hard, just want to make sure you do it right. So on there, on that side, that's the negative side I did first, but I figured out where the positive was. Wow, I'm going to have to see if I can focus in on that. It's hard for me to do this. My brain doesn't think like that. So I got one of them on. Now it's time to do the positive side. Or sorry, the... Uh, yeah, the positive side, I do believe. All right. You know, that positive side is pretty close. that ground plane there. I wonder if I shouldn't have it on. Could pull it up a little bit. Don't want it touching anything. We don't want the positive to be touching the chassis. I don't believe that would be a very good idea. Oh, I didn't get that. I think I was pointing the wrong direction. Well, it's on there now. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. Let's give just a little bit of a tug to make sure it's on there pretty good. Seems to be. I'm going to have to try to focus in on this manually because it doesn't do a dang thing unless I do it that way. Yeah, I think that's going to be way too bright, maybe. So yeah, it looks like I got it. I wish that that insulation was just a little more. I think it'll be okay though. So now. Here, let's turn, turn the autofocus back on. We're going to slide the enclosure up. We're going to have to have this bent eventually. So you have to bend it. I think it'll be okay like that. I 
And there's that little rubber thing. Should just screw right in there, making sure that's you know in there far enough. Man, my fridge is still going. So there's that. And then we have one of these uh, clippies to put on there. There it is. I'll get used to this uh, autofocus versus manual focus. I know about where to put it. So our moment of truth is going to be Probably, uh, I'll proceed to put this on. Again, this is the EM Primo, sorry, the Primo EM264 from MikeBoosters.com. We'll slay this bad boy on here and we'll clip it on my shirt. Right next to the other one. in fairly close proximity. Now I may want to actually, you know, hold it to. All right, so let's do a switch. I kind of want to get this on. Let's see if I can focus in on that a little better. All right, so we're, not, we're going to unplug the EM272 and plug in the EM264. Test one, two. Well, it's working. I think it needs to be turned up. I do hear a little less fridge. Um, So there we go. Let me see what happens if I, uh, we'll see what the game looks like first of all. I have to go to the back of my camera here. Test one, two, test. Test, test, test. I don't think I can switch it. I mean, I do have a preamp that I can switch. Maybe that could be turned up and not be messed up. Test one, two, test, test, test one, test. Yeah, I get to turn this up a lot more. Test one, two, a lot more. Test one, two, test. Test one, two. I don't know what's up with that. It doesn't. Test one, two. Test. 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 I got this cranked up all the way on my camera preamp. Test one, two. Test. Test one, two. Test. 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 So that's what that sounds like. I'll grab it and I'll hold it in front of me. Test one, two, test, test one, two. I think you've already seen it. It's already got a speck of white lint on it or something. So far, everything we put together works. I don't think I would dare turn on the other mic 
to do an another A B because it's way louder. Test one two. And honestly, it's almost like my fridge is noisier. Wasn't this supposed to test one two? Test, test, test. Hopefully I have it wired correctly. I don't know if I need to look at that again. Some it sounds okay, but I got it cranked up quite a bit. And if it wasn't for the fridge. Test, test. It does reject my voice when I turn it the other way, I guess. Test. But now I think I got some kind of noise going on with it. So we'll have to see. Test, one, two. Test, 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 test. Interesting. I may want to kill the fridge real quick to see how much of this is the fridge I'm actually hearing. Hold on. I think we have... some noise. Testing one, two, three. Well... Yeah, I unplugged a lot of stuff. <laughs> Couldn't figure out where the fridge wasn't labeled. I do believe it's off. Yeah, but something's not right. I might have to look at my soldering job or something. Test. Test one, two. Test. Unless it's just better down here. Test one, two. Test, test one, two, test. Because where was I over here when I was cranked up? Test one, two, test, test. It seemed like it was okay. Test one, two, test. It's not. It's up like to negative 12 dB there. Test. Test one, two. But, uh, let's see what it sounds like. Down here, test one, two, test. I just turned down my headphones. Test, it might be all right. Test one, two. Well, honestly, it's, it might be more meant for holding. Test one, two, test. Test one, two, test. It might be not so much meant for your shirt because you're. But it, there does seem to be an issue with this mic. Test. Holding it away from me. Did I just quit recording? Okay. But no, that seems like a little too much noise floor there. Oh yeah, something's up with it. Test. I mean, it's not horrible, but it kind of is for video. Test one, two. I probably need to revisit this. See if I can come up with a, a solution. Maybe make sure wires aren't. Well, if wires were touching, I think it would be worse than this. Test one, two. You're not going to have it holding up right here. Or are you? Test. It does reject it pretty good. Test. That part's working. Like if I'm... If it's held away from me, it definitely rejects it. But I got some buzz going here. Let's see what I can do.
Well, I messed around with it, resoldered it and stuff. When it was out of this capsule, or when it was out of this enclosure, it sounded good when I touched it, but now it's the opposite. Inside this enclosure, I touch it, and the ground loop or whatever is worse. We'll see if that comes through in the playback. My guess is it would. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm back. After work today, I uh, messed around some more with the EM264. It's the uh, cardioid unidirectional microphone. I soldered it, resoldered it. It's very forgiving, I guess. Don't quote me, it might not be for you. Also, took apart my preamp that, that goes to my camera. It's not my camera's preamp, but it's one that I use with it. I found a pretty bent ribbon cable in there in a pretty uncomfortable position. And I noticed when I touched on the pot, it would straighten itself out as far as my audio. It wasn't the 60 hertz hum I was hearing though, it was more like going in and out. So anyway, I took care of that by rearranging that ribbon cable, how it was uh, kind of arranged in there with the battery. Much better now as far as that goes. Although that may have mostly just affected the monitoring that I heard and maybe not so much playback. So if I want to make that hum go away on this microphone, maybe it just needs XLR. And I do believe I've seen, I know I've seen a similar mic configured as such on MikeBooster.com. I, I imagine this may work. I'd have to do some more research. I don't know if it gets phantom power. I think it actually does. Full 38 volts, I'm not sure. Don't quote me, we don't wanna fry these things based on something I said. There goes my fridge. Be a good test to see if this uh, was able to handle that. Of course, if I'm pointed, maybe it'd actually be better if I went this way, no? So yeah, if you hear my fridge, you're probably going to hear it even with this. I don't think it has that great of noise cancellation or whatever reduction. Uh, this is like a grounding loop issue here or similar, maybe not exactly those terms, but so you touch that, you definitely know something's going on. That Now this actually helped it if I... Of course now I hear my... my uh, my fridge back there but I can hear a difference when I touch that it actually reduces the noise from the all right so I'm back I want to see if I can take care of this for lack of better terms and this may not actually be the problem I'm going to call it a ground loop issue I think I know you have to have at least two units that are connected the, I mean that camera is not even connected to ground really and then there wasn't really any issue until I got close to this computer see I want to see I better I, I bet and don't do this unless you know what you're doing for sure I mean I just got some wire and you could just maybe you know want to screw a screw from the chassis of your power strip just a screw but I don't even recommend that unless you know what you're doing. Do not do this unless you know what you're doing. I was just going to connect only to the ground plug. Only the ground plug. Only the ground plug. And uh, don't even do that unless you know what you're doing. Do not do it. <laughs> All right. Cannot emphasize that enough. But yeah, when I was close to the camera, like if I went back here, I didn't really notice any anything. I'm way back here now. And there's traffic and stuff, but that's different. So I don't know if you just want to call this a 60 hertz hum or, or what, I don't know.
Now I got some stinking wire strippers. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't just get it for this because that'd be a total waste. I guess I'll, I'll be using these in the future, right? I've had a pair of these before. I'm not even sure exactly what that is, but we'll leave it in here. I know that I used it now. Probably good to keep those in that position, maybe. I'll have to do some research. I think I accidentally donated mine to my work years ago. Possibly, I don't know. It's been too many years. This is the wrong size screwdriver. Should have all this stuff ready when I go, right? It'll work for now. Oh, here's... Here's my bits. Or my screwdriver. Bits, if that's a term. I don't even know. So there you go. Do not connect anything to those or you're going to be in trouble. Wow. Honestly, what I'm doing right here will probably introduce more interference. <laughs> we'll see, though. You just never know. I don't know if I want to wrap that back in there. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope that's long enough. If not, I'm going to make one that's even longer. Try a different outlet or, or get rid of the plug altogether and wrap I don't know what a pipe would do. It might really introduce interference. It's hard to know. I'm just going to try. Wrap it around a pipe if this doesn't work. That could, I mean, I would think that could make it better or worse. I really don't know. Trying to see if that'll focus at all. Oh, I think I have this on manual focus now that I remember. But it's all right. You're just going to Watch me uh, cut a wire, it's not really a biggie. To get my bigger bit set up. Ah, it's right here. This probably would work better. Hear that noise? I don't know what that person's doing, but I always hear that noise. I don't know, is he lifting weights? I don't know. All right, that's on there. That looks really funny, a tiny wire coming out of there. Am I recording? I'm still recording. Um, yeah, don't do this again. Do not do this unless you know what you're doing. This is just connected to the ground plug, however. The other two are not connected, very important. No, they're still there as a guide, but as good as nothing. All right, so this is the other end of the wire. I think the focal point is way down here somewhere. We need to uh, make that a little bit more. Whoops. Whoops, I didn't do that good at all. There we go. I am just going to uh, wrap this, figure out a good screwdriver. I think I did already use this one. 
there's an XLR port. I'm not going to use the XLR, although that may solve some of my problems. Maybe later, I'll see if I can make a, uh, or have someone make a microphone that's a lavalier microphone with a US, with a XLR. But there's a couple screws that are probably going to ground, would be my guess. I'm going to put And they seem like they're on bare. Well, I'm not going to scrape away any bare, any paint, but the the screw itself is bare. Now, I doubt it. Whoa! Try not to trip over these cords. I've got a long microphone cord and a long headphone cord now when I touch this without touching that touching my MacBook without touching that it's like that but with touching this you still get a little bit but a way less what happens if I touch it here? Okay, nope. If I touch it here and here, nope. But if I touch it here, then touch my MacBook a lot less. So, like you'd hold it. Feels weird holding a plug, though. That is kind of weird. You could plug it in. It feels really weird plugging that in. Nope. That did not help. In fact, I made it worse, I think. We back up. It didn't really make it worse as long as I'm not close by. If I'm close by, let's get rid of this USB charger. That didn't help. I could plug it in. Well, that's my problem is probably too many power strips and things like that. Granted, though. I was thinking it went away a little bit more when I held on to this. It does. Not holding on. Holding on. Hear that? Well, that's one way to do it. I'm apparently... That's one way to do it. I think the solution, though, would be to... find some other way. <laughs> Probably a different outlet. But I'd have to extend this quite a ways for that. See? So I'm on to something. It's just how long do I want to make this wire? Um, yeah. Now there's a... There's one back here. Right now my... There's a power strip back here. It's on a different circuit. Keep in mind, I'm only plugging this in. Only the ground is being impacted. That was not good. I can hear. Yeah, I introduced more noise by doing that one.
That did not work out. So if I hold on to it, that's really my best bet. I don't know if I could just... Well, I know what I could do. Get some heel straps and uh, solder it on there. Or actually not even heel straps, just uh, put it in your sock. <laughs> That'd be kind of weird. It would probably work. I mean, just connect this plug all together, really, and put the wire, just like you wear the heel straps for uh, ESD. But really, when I'm not around, if I get farther away from that MacBook, maybe the MacBook's the thing that needs to be grounded, I don't know. It should be, though. This is probably interference of some other kind, I don't know. I do hear a very, very slight difference when I got... When I'm away from the source of noise, there probably actually has a very little bit of it left, even from this distance. You know that it's psychosomatic at this point. But it's not psychosomatic when I get up here close. I can definitely hear that. Touch, Not touching it, touching it. Not touching it. Touching it, and again, all this is is a ground plug, and I have a, a screw there on the preamp that I just fastened the wire to. The screw was holding in an XLR jack, so I figured that was a good place as any, probably the best place. That definitely works. So there's probably some grounding issues in this place. I could try going more direct and bypassing the power strip, I guess, if I can find an outlet. That's not dedicated for something else. Nope. That is the noise, pretty much. When I plugged that in, it actually made it worse. Oh, there's my printer going off. Yeah, if I hold it like this, I can get rid of the 60 hertz hum or whatever that is. Oh. The other solution would be just to get it out of this plug and just tuck it in my uh, sock. <laughs> I got some other kind of weird interference now. There, now it's gone. The only other thing I could do is, that'd be kind of an extreme thing to wrap it around, so. Wrap it around uh, and it still doesn't get rid of it totally like if I touch it, if I touch my MacBook. But if I let go of this, it's a lot worse. So it's helping out quite a bit. Maybe if you had thicker wire it would get rid of more, I don't know. I don't think this problem would likely exist outside unless I was near a power line or something. Let's try that. I don't know. Let's see what happens when I... Uh... Well, that's my sink. See? Proof that this place doesn't have very good maintenance. <laughs> Better not say that. They do, I suppose, if I complain more.
I'm going to tuck this in my sock and see what happens. Oops. I think that's a similar effect to just holding on to it all the time. I don't know what that noise is. That might be in my battery, my preamp getting low. Not really sure. Or if you can even hear it. Or if that's just the light that I got. Wow. What if this is generating some noise too? Well, at least right now, as long as I don't touch this computer, I don't have that noise. Even with that just tucked in my sock on my skin there. But if I take this out and I'm that close to the, not even touching the computer, but just that close. Yep. I don't know what happens if this wire touches, let's say. This would be the same difference, though. This is like touching itself, pretty much. That won't help. Mm, I'm not sure. Because I'm touching it. Don't even need that big plug, as long as I'm touching this. Hear it? Of course, right now over here is a stinking. Here, I'll move my headphones on the other side or something. Sorry. Yeah, my headphones are all wrapped around. Yeah. I think it sounded a little better when it was on here. But I'm not going to sit there and hold that. So those kind of ribbon like things that are on ESD straps. That would be kind of cool for this. Or just expose more wire. That might. And just to be fair, it seems like that impacted this mic. What is this? The I don't remember off the top of my head, but it's the cardioid one. I want to say 264 or 262 or something like that. But, uh, yeah, the other ones I have or have a more sensitivity that requires much gain, I guess. I'm still kind of new to this, so I don't want to get too much into that because I may uh, say something incorrect. As far as I can tell, this definitely does not have the sensitivity that my other two lavaliers have from my, well, one's, I have one other from Mike Booster and then one from DigiKey. And we won't even talk about this one here from uh, LVoxCon. Well, that's probably not as bad as I make it out to be. Um, all right, so I guess that's it. That's just a little thing I wanted to tag on the end there. 
But I, I think that noise is still there in the other mics, it's just not as noticeable. So if I'm indoors and there's that problem, this is a solution if I'm just sitting here. If I'm walking around a little bit, I may have to come up with a new, a new solution. I don't want this wire tethered to me that much. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there'll be a solution. You could tape it to yourself if you had to. Or just find decent ground. It's a tiny apartment. I don't know if I can find a better ground. Maybe. If I really want it, I could string a long green wire, but I don't know if that's acting like an antenna to have it so long. I really don't know. Probably not. But not unless it's hooked up to an antenna or a receiver of some kind. All right, I'm boring myself. I am back. What I've done is I've got myself some green wire. I put one of it, one end of that to my preamp on my camera. I use a screw that was mounting the XLR plug and the other end got tucked in my sock here, exposing my skin. So far I can show you. Like if I take it out, you should hear the 60 hertz hum or whatever that is. You don't really hear it that much. A little bit, see. Now if I touch, touch it and it goes away. What happens if I touch this? Nah. Makes it worse. I knew that. Now if I touch this and my MacBook, it's still there but not as bad. If I let go, it's really bad. Touch this again. Let go. That's the best right there. My guess is just a little bit better and just keeping some distance from the interference. <laughs> And there's other things around here that did it too. I think my, that interface is even worse. Roughly as bad. So I don't know if, I don't know what we can do. Maybe, maybe it's a matter of grounding some of these things. I don't know. That's how it is for right now. I think you could ground. Yeah, that's pretty noisy there. Wow. I'm thinking about what happened if you'd ground this. What would happen? I'll try it later. Thanks for watching.